3, 2, 1. Hey guys, Dan Robinson here and welcome to episode 6. Yes, episode 6 of Digital Rewind. I didn't have a video out last Friday. I took some time off. We had uh, Canadian Thanksgiving. So basically what I'm trying to do is figure out how to balance um, a full-time job. I work a 9 to 5 job with my family life. I have a wife and two kids and another one due in February. So things are consistently crazy. Uh, and then I'm making these videos. Uh, trying to get them out every week, as well as running my Instagram page. Uh, it's uh, at, at, like that, at Digital Rewind. So feel free to check that out. I'm basically putting up a picture there every day. So uh, whether it's pictures from some of the film cameras I shoot or just being out and about uh, taking pictures with uh, my digital camera as well. So check that out, follow it, like the photos, comment, whatever and make sure to please subscribe to these videos as well because it is a lot of work to to get these out there and while it is my passion I, I definitely want to have people in a community talking about cameras and photography and critiquing uh, my work as well uh, so let's get on to this week's camera what I did is I met up with um, actually a co-worker of uh, my wife her and her husband their family they have a 1932 chevy basically you can see in that footage that it's just at the side of the road what we had intended to do was have it drive to a nice park or a scenic place uh, with some fall colors in the background and it actually stalled about halfway there so uh, they couldn't get it going at that point in time and so i just shot pictures right as it stood so uh, the camera that I used was actually um, belongs to my brother-in-law. It was his great aunt's or grandma's or something like that. I should probably fact check. Um, but this is the Pentax ME Super. So this was manufactured from 1979 to 1984. It was extremely successful because of its um, simplicity. Uh, it's actually quite tough. Um, and it's for a, for an SLR at the time. It is a little bit more compact. Uh, it's it's kind of your typical Canon AE1 size. You basically write on the back of your um, winding dial here. It shows your ISO, which actually at the time was ASA. So you could adjust your film speed. Um, on the right side is basically to crank the film. Um, and other than that, you have your auto setting. Uh, and then you have to actually push this button down here to go to manual. And now what that allows you to do is adjust your shutter, but there is no shutter dial. It's these buttons here. So you push up and it goes up in speed and down and it goes down in speed. So kind of an interesting little thing to get used to. Um, what I did actually is I shot in auto for this shoot just to see how the light meter um, in this camera handled it. Now, when my sister let me borrow it, it was covered in dust like absolutely covered uh, it had been sitting on a shelf for a really really long time so I didn't even really clean it that well I just took a dry toothbrush and kind of scraped it all down and wiped off the lens it's got a, um, a UV filter on here so if you actually if you actually take this off here oh boy the lens itself is really clean inside so that's a good thing this one does come with a hot shoe for a flash it comes with a trigger um, port on the side there if you want to hook that up. You got your timer here and then to remove the the lens there's this little little trigger right here. You line up your red dots. Yeah see it's kind of gunky on the outside. It's clean on the inside but to load it up you just pull on your uh, rewind here and yeah it actually looks pretty clean inside. Looks pretty good. You put your film in here slide across like you would and then you actually can just jam it you jam the film in one of these little slots here and this the um, sprockets will catch so you close it up you'll end up cranking it forward a few shots until on the display it's it's it'll say one which is not actually a one it's just a dot it's zero dot two dot four dot six dot so and then you've got your uh, aperture setting on this ring your f-stop now I'm going to cut to the shots, the, the few shots that I did actually really like from this camera because 
The one thing I definitely noticed is it wasn't super sharp and that could have just been this lens or it could have just been my focusing, but yeah, it wasn't overly sharp. Like in uh, one of the previous videos I did, I, I used the Canon AF 35 ML, which is from the, actually around the same time period, but it's a point and shoot. And that, uh, that lens is really sharp. And I said that in the other video. This was, it was okay. It, it just, it didn't quite seem to have that sharp glass. Um, but it still did, did a good job. The other, the one other thing I noticed is I think the, the meter on this might be a tiny bit off just because it's, this is older. Um, just, just because sometimes that happens as uh, these cameras get older. So I noticed that some of the pictures that came out ended up a little bit darker than I would have liked in the auto setting. Um, I was trying to rely on that to see how it could handle it. And yeah, some of them just turned out a little bit dark, so I had to bump them up a little bit. Uh, a couple of the shots actually turned out really dark, so I couldn't really do much with them. Um, and then, and then a, a few other times, the sensor focused on the bright, even, even though I pointed it at a certain area, it focused on the brightness of the sun in the background. So what I was actually trying to shoot uh, was in the dark. So that's just a reality of, of how things happen sometimes when you're not using a light meter because I didn't have a light meter with me checking the spots and adjusting it manually. I was relying on that auto exposure. It's just the reality of it. So again, just get out there, find an old camera. I guarantee a relative of yours or a friend of yours has one sitting in their attic or in their basement or on a shelf that's a decoration that probably still works and it's not being used and just see if they'll uh, lend it to you. You can go out, film is actually still really easy to get and surprisingly it's still really easy to get developed. Uh, I think you'll find it's really satisfying. The pictures, uh, when they turn out well, it gives you this extra sense of satisfaction because you put that little bit of extra work into it and there's nothing quite like uh, scanning in those negatives or pulling those prints out of that uh, paper envelope and seeing how your work turned out. Feel free to ask me any questions, make suggestions on maybe some cameras you'd like to see or more features you'd like to talk about. And like I said at the beginning, don't forget to subscribe and head on over to Instagram at Digital Rewind and subscribe to that as well. Lots of new uh, content coming, pictures and videos, so check it out. Thanks. See ya. Yeah.